Hello and welcome to this training video. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of the Adina user interface. So the first thing that I've done is to click on the AUI icon on the screen. And we need to, before anything else, specify which Adina edition, Adina license we are going to be working with. So the first option, Adina, is the Adina standard edition, which includes the structures module. Then we have uh, the second option, which is Adina Advanced, which um, includes Adina Structures Module and also Thermal and Thermomechanical Coupling. And finally, we have the Adina Ultimate Edition, which includes all the previews, which are uh, Adina Structures, uh, Thermal and Thermomechanical Coupling, and also Computational Fluid Dynamics, Fluid Structure Interaction, and Electromagnetics. We also have an optional license here to um, select or not the Adina Parasolid model, which comes under an additional separate license. We click OK with those settings to open the Adina user interface. And the first thing that I want to talk about are these drop-down lists to the top left of the screen. The first drop-down list is the program module, uh, where we can choose between um, a series of model types which depend on the license we've selected. So if we selected uh, Adina Ultimate, we can have either Adina Structures, Adina Thermal, Computational Fluid Dynamics, Electromagnetics. Um, we always have the post-processing because this is where we visualize the results. If I had selected, for instance, um, the standard tier, Adina Standard, then I would only have Adina Structures and post-processing. The, <clears throat> the second drop-down list includes the analysis types that we can perform uh, with the program module that we've selected. So, for instance, these are all the structure analysis types that we can perform in Adina. We have linear and nonlinear statics. And we have time domain dynamics, namely implicit and explicit. And then we have a series of um, frequency domain analysis options like model analysis and um, if we want to work out frequencies and modes, we can perform a modal superposition to work out the dynamics response and so on. We also have linearized backlink and collapse. There is a command button here, analysis option, right next to the analysis type. And if we click on it, this is going to open uh, the options that we have or settings that we have for, in this case, the static analysis. Um, if, if I had selected here a dynamic implicit, then the analysis options would open a different dialog with um, different analysis settings that I can control. A useful feature of Adina is the ability to switch between analysis types during one solution run. I can do that through control, analysis switch, I may want to start, for instance, with a static analysis, and after a certain time, let's imagine, for instance, after one second of static analysis, we want to switch to a different analysis type. Imagine that we want to uh, run a dynamic analysis after setting up some or initial static conditions, for instance. OK, I'm going to cancel this for the time being. The third drop down list is the uh, multi-physics coupling uh, set of options where we specify uh, if we want to perform a coupling or an interaction between two different um, Adina analysis types or Adina modules, this is where we can choose the second option. So imagine that we are going to perform a fluid structure interaction analysis and we are at the moment modeling the structure that will be part of that FSI analysis. So we will have to have Adina structures with CFD, and this will enable um, on the menu the options that I need to perform or to uh, build my structure analysis model that will be part of the FSI. Um, then, of course, I will have to have another model, which is an Adina CFD with the structures, which is the uh, fluids part of the uh, 
employee structure interaction analysis, but that's not, we're not going to get um, into the details of this on this training video. At the top of the um, interface, we have a series of command buttons, which uh, give us a fast access to some of the operations that we can also find on the menu here at the top. So we can control which of these icons we want to visualize or hide through the uh, view menu, customize. Um, here, for instance, imagine that while I am preparing my model, I don't want to have all these results command buttons, so I can switch off that toolbar. Um, or I can, for instance, create a new toolbar, which is called uh, my new toolbar. This has created a, a blank toolbar where we can um, add the options that we want. For instance, we go here to the uh, commands tab. We have all our icons divided in categories. So I may want to have a button for a new model, another one to open and to create and to save. Um, and then I want to have uh, one to create a point and uh, to create lines. We can, of course, switch on and off that toolbar and we can delete it if we are no longer interested. Right, let's move on to see a, an actual model. Uh, I'm not going to create a new model from scratch in this case that will be covered in next training videos. Um, what I'm going to do is open an existing model file, uh, which I can do through the shortcuts. So I can go to file, open and select a file with, with an IDB extension. This is uh, our Adina model. So I'm going to open that uh, and we can see that uh, well, our model has opened. Uh, and the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the tree view here to the left. So automatically, as soon as we open the model, a series of fields were displayed here which contain specific information for this model. So we have element groups, so for instance, what type of uh, elements we have in the model. If I click on the plus signs to the left of these fields, I can see that we have 768 3D solid elements. This has an index of two in this case, perhaps there was an index one in the model at some point that was deleted. Then we have a, a materials, we have an elastic material and so on. I can right click on each of these uh, features and we can control the visualization. Uh, we can modify to open, see what's in them and um, we can tweak this material properties if we want to cancel. I can also right click and highlight. So it will highlight everything which has this particular property assigned. So the whole model um, includes so it contains this elastic material. So it highlights the entire model. And here at the bottom, we have a zone, a zone field. So this zone is actually a visualization layers, equivalent to visualization layers if you've used uh, certain CAD packages, for instance, uh, which allows you to control what you see and what you don't see uh, on the screen. For instance, there is an element group uh, zone here that um, was automatically created when the model was meshed. So when we perform certain operations like creating a, a geometry body or to or meshing, for instance, some of these zones are automatically created. Let's, uh, for instance, change the color of this one and update the uh, color of the entire element group too. I'm going to change the shading of the model to solid so we can better see. And if I decide to delete by right clicking on this zone, uh, delete and say yes, we see that the color of the model has been reverted back to the original, but nothing has fundamentally changed because all we've done is to remove a, a, a zone, uh, those visualization layers that was, I was saying before. Imagine that I want to define myself a, a new zone. So we do that by right clicking here on zone and add, uh, let's call this left elements. Uh, we say, well, let's pick a, 
a filter for elements, a double click on contents, select those elements which are to the left, right click, finish. I don't want to include any associated geometry, but I do want to have all the nodes which are attached to those elements. Click OK and a new zone has shown up. Let's go to zone, right click, define and have a second zone which is right elements. Uh, we select the picking filter elements again. We don't want geometry, we want nodes. Double click on the contents, select the elements to the right, right click and finish and OK. And now we have two new zones that I've just created. We click on the white box. Let's select, let's pick a green color for those elements. And for the right elements, let's take a pink. Now, let's uh, imagine that I, can, I want to use these groups to control what's displayed on the screen. So I can right click and display just a green, or right click and display just a pink, or I want to add uh, the display to whatever is on the screen. Okay, um, let me now show you a few final tips before we solve the model. So I'm going to uh, rotate and uh, make a bit smaller the, the model. If we go to mesh plot, uh, I can click on this as many times as I like, as I want, and it will continue to display more views of the model. So let's imagine that um, I want to, the model to be always displayed like this. So I go to this command button, save mesh plot style, click on it. And now every time I click on mesh plot, a copy of a mesh will be uh, displayed just like that. Uh, and perhaps I want a third one that I'm going to put in here. Uh, and I can select each of them and put them in the model rotate them, visualize them independently. Let's uh, imagine that for this particular uh, view at the bottom, I want to display the loading so I can uh, select it by clicking on it. I'm going to uh, plot the load with this command button uh, and the load has shown right there. We can see it. Uh, and let's imagine that this other mesh plot I want to uh, well, displayed uh, not as a solid, let's say, wireframe or, or even uh, with some transparency. Okay. Um, and this command button here next to the load plot is the boundary plot uh, where I can also display the support. So we see that <clears throat> all that phase has support supplied. Okay. Uh, so I'm now going to solve the analysis because we want to see the results for this particular um, structure analysis model. So we go here to data file solution. This is the shortcut that I can also access from solution data file run. So um, it's exactly the same one or the other one. The first thing that we are um, prompted to do, we have a dialog opening, which is to create the Adina data file. This is a file that can be uh, read by the structures module in this case uh, to solve the analysis. I have this option ticked on the um, run solution. So when I click save, the Adina data file will be created and the solution will be run. In some special cases, I may want to create a data file, but not run the solution, in which case I switch this one off. Uh, but we will be covering that in other training videos. I click Save and the Adina Structures window uh, comes up and the solution has now been completed. So I can close and close those uh, interfaces and I'm going to switch on here the post-processing interface to visualize the results. From the post-processing interface, we can now go back again to uh, open through the shortcut or through file open. And the results file is called porthole. Uh, it has a porthole extension that has just been created. So we can double click on it and the results are open. Um, we see the uh, access system, the global access system uh, displayed to the top right of the screen. 
uh, we may want to see where the loading is applied um, and so on. Uh, perhaps let's put the shading as solid. Now we can't see much. This is the deformed shape that is being displayed, uh, but the formations are small, as it often happens in a structure analysis, uh, in a linear elastic uh, structure analysis. So by clicking this uh, option, this button here, we can scale the displacements up to a 10% of the total dimension of the model. So if I click on there, we see that we can now better appreciate those um, the deformed shape. Here through the modify mesh plot uh, model depiction, we can change this magnification factor. We see that to achieve that 10% of the overall model dimension, it has applied a magnification factor of over 8,000. Let's imagine that I want to actually have a bit bigger uh, magnification factor, 12,000 and OK. So that has uh, exaggerated the deformed shape even more. Um, if I put this um, the, the shading back to original and I can superimpose the original mesh as well. So we can uh, compare the deformed and deformed mesh a bit better. Switch that off again. Um, and then let's show very quickly, we can, um, through the quick bump plot, display the um, effective stresses, um, which this, these are the von Mises stresses that we, for instance, often use to check if the model might be yielding. Uh, I can switch this off again by clearing the bump plot. And this is the generic bump plot uh, where I can select all the possible results that I, I want to um, displace. So we have the displacements. We might be interested to see the Y displacements. Click OK, there we go. We have a legend with the a maximum and minimum displacement. This has a sign, so it has a maximum displacement is a minus nine, a e minus six in this case. Um, let's put back the uh, von Mises stresses and let's imagine now that I want to cut through a surface and see um, what's the von Mises stress at one particular section of this model. So we do that through next to the deformed shape. There is a cut surface option, select cut in plane. Um, the Z plane is the longitudinal axis of this, um, of this structure, and let's assume a coordinate value of 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.1. Um, click OK, and then we can see uh, the stresses through a, a cut, a section of the model, and then going back to the cut surface, we can revert this back to the original. Um, and finally, we can also um, display numerical values. So let's imagine that I want to know uh, the displacement of one particular node. So first of all, we need to, it's convenient to switch on the node, sim node symbols. Uh, we go to definitions, model point, node. We add a, a node, uh, let's call it node A. Click on the P, select that particular node we're interested in, OK. And then we go to a list, value list, model points. And for that node A, we may want to have all displacement components in X, Y, and Z. Click on apply. Actually, this is the set displacement, it's a rotation. I made a mistake, so I go back, change it, apply. That's giving us the uh, three displacement components for that uh, load case and that node in particular. And then we could either export to a text file or export the table. And this is something we can copy and paste into a spreadsheet if we want to. OK, well, we've reached the end of this uh, training video. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.